and welcome back to my channel. This week, we are going to share four of the most delicious meals that we had this week. They were easy, they were affordable, and they were delicious. So stay tuned. Let's get in the kitchen and let's get cooking. The first meal that we're sharing this week is Italian sausage and ricotta stuffed shells. So I had a package, a one pound package of sweet Italian sausage. So I just put that in my cast iron skillet and I brown that up. Next, I'm going to take this container of ricotta and I'm going to put that into my mixing bowl and then I'm going to be adding in some seasonings. Once I have the ricotta in my mixing bowl, I'm going to add in a bunch of seasonings. So I'm gonna start with garlic powder. I'm going to season this liberally with the garlic powder. A lot of times if people think they don't like ricotta, it's because they're not seasoning it enough. So I'm also gonna add in some minced onion. I'm going to add in some Italian seasoning. And then I'm going to add in a little kick. I'm going to add in some ground red cayenne pepper. So I'm going to add that to the ricotta cheese. I'm going to give this a stir so that it becomes well combined. Next, I'm going to season with some pepper. I'm not going to add any extra salt because there's going to be a lot of salt in the other items that I'm going to add to this mixture. I'm also going to add in some Parmesan cheese, just a handful or so. I'm gonna add that and some mozzarella to the ricotta cheese. And then I'm going to give that a stir to combine. And the next thing I'm gonna add is an egg. The egg is going to act as a binder. So it's going to give this a more of a thickening um, texture, I guess you could say. So I just stir that egg into my mixture and then I'm going to be ready to add in the sausage. So I take the sausage. I browned up this entire pound. I don't think I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use half of it in these stuffed shells and I'm going to reserve the other half and I'm going to put it in the freezer so that I can use it with another meal. So I give the mixture a stir and then I'm going to take a freezer bag. I was out of quart size freezer bags, so I had to use this big gallon size, which was too big, but that's okay. So I'm labeling it. I'm gonna put this cooked Italian sausage in my freezer and it'll be ready to go in another recipe. Now it's time to stuff my shells. So I have my nine by 13 casserole dish. I'm gonna take some of this jar of pasta sauce and I'm going to spread that over the bottom of my pan here. And then I'm gonna kinda of roll it around so that it's all very well coated. And then I have this from my freezer. Now the last time I cooked stuffed shells, I only used half of the box, but I had cooked the whole box. So I figured out how I could freeze the cooked shells and it worked perfectly. So I took the frozen shells out of the freezer, let them thaw, and now they're already cooked and ready to stuff. So I'm going to stuff the shells and I'm going to line them into my casserole dish. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I have used up all of the shells. And here are my finished shells. They are stuffed, they smell delicious. I'm gonna pour a little bit more of this sauce over the shells and then we will be ready to bake. So once I have the sauce all over the shells, I'm going to cover this with some mozzarella cheese and some more of the Parmesan cheese that I had. I do have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I am going to put this in the oven covered with aluminum foil at first for about 20 minutes and then I'm going to uncover and let the cheese kind of melt. I'm going to serve this with some garlic breadsticks. I'm just going to cook these up according to the package. And here are my stuffed shells out of the oven and here is my plate. This was delicious. It was amazing. And the garlic breadsticks was a nice touch to kind of dip into all the extra sauce that we had. This dinner was great. The next meal we had this week, I'm actually not gonna show on this video. This video is going to be on a separate video, which is a cookbook collab. So check that out on Friday. 
The next meal kind of went sideways this week. I was going to make a Caprese sandwich and my family decided they really wanted subs. So we went to the store and we got things for subs. It was a beautiful day and we just kind of really wanted to have a make your own sub night. So I've got the pepperoncini that was left from another recipe. We have sub buns. We got two different cheeses. We got ham and turkey you got the black forest ham and then we got some provolone and some pepper jack i had some roma tomatoes that i was going to do for the caprese sandwiches so i cut those up i cut up some romaine lettuce and this was it on this night i meant to get um a video or a photo of one of the completed sandwiches but i didn't but this was a hit the family was very happy the last meal that we're going to share this week is a shepherd's pie. This is delicious. It was rainy this day, so this was a nice change. So I'm going to start by taking this um, pound of beef. This is a pound of ground beef that I got from my butcher box. I'm going to put that in a skillet and get that browning up. And then we are going to be making the mashed potatoes and getting everything ready for the shepherd's pie. So once the ground beef is on the stove and browning up, I have this half of an onion that was left from another recipe that I'm going to chop up and I'm going to add this to the skillet with the ground beef. I'm going to add some seasonings now to this ground beef and onion mixture. One thing that I'm going to be adding is two really good pinches of kosher salt. And then I'm going to be adding one good pinch of coarse black pepper. I'm also going to be adding in a couple splashes of Worcestershire sauce. I like Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, that's hard to say, <laughs> but I like it with anything that is beef. And so I added that in and give that a stir. And once I'm waiting on the beef to finish cooking, I'm going to go ahead and cook up this family size instant potato pack going to cook it to the package directions if you had real potatoes and you wanted to make homemade mashed potatoes by all means yummy or this is a great way to use up leftover mashed potatoes in a recipe now that my ground beef mixture is cooked through i'm going to be adding in some elements for the sauce so I have one packet of this beefy onion soup mix left. I was thinking I would use that up and then add in some water. Um, you could add all kinds of things to this to make this a gravy. You could add in a gravy packet, um, but this is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to add in a dash of cayenne pepper just to give it a little hint of something extra. And then I'm going to add in that soup packet. And then I'm going to add in some water. This is my beef mixture once it has all been mixed up. And I'm going to add in this package of frozen mixed vegetables. This has carrots, green beans, corn, and peas. So I'm going to add that in to my skillet and let that begin to heat through while I'm waiting on my mashed potatoes. Now I have seen shepherd's pie that had just peas and carrots. I have seen where they have actually added diced potatoes to this part, but this is the way that I've always made it. So next I shredded up a block of sharp cheddar cheese that I had. I don't think I'm going to be using the whole thing on top of this, but I went ahead and shredded it all up so that I would have extra for another recipe. So here is my casserole dish. It's not like measured by like the size of the perimeter, I guess you could say. It's just a three quart casserole dish. So I sprayed it lightly just so there wouldn't be anything sticking. And then I'm going to add the beef mixture to the bottom. And I'm going to spread that into an even layer into the bottom of this casserole dish. Now I will say that using that French onion soup and water made this really watery. I would add a cornstarch slurry to make this thicker. I'm gonna take my mashed potatoes. I'm gonna spread that in an even layer on top of the meat mixture. This is already smelling so delicious. The potatoes with the meat and the onions and the veggies and the soup. 
this is such a comforting meal. So once I get the mashed potatoes spread in an even layer, we will cover with cheese. So I take about half of this block of cheese and I spread that over the top of the mashed potatoes. Again, I just like to go ahead and get all the work done at once. So I had my shredder out, I had the cheese out, why not go ahead and shred the whole thing? So I will just place whatever cheese is left over in a baggie, put it in my fridge, and then I have it ready for the next time I need it. Once I have all the cheese on top of the mashed potatoes, I am going to cover this with foil. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I am going to cover this with foil, put it in the oven for 20 minutes. Then I'm going to remove the foil. I'm gonna up the temperature to 425 and let it sit for another 10 minutes just to brown the cheese. And here is my shepherd's pie out of the oven. Here you can see some of that liquid seeping through. That's what I was talking about. It was a little watery. But here is our plate. This was delicious. This is always delicious. And it's such a comfort food. Definitely something that you need to try. This was a delicious dinner.